In this video, I'm going to show you how to change out one of these bigger fuses as they're not as easy as one would think. You cannot just pull these out as they are going to be bolted on the sides. And there's normally two bolts that hold this in. And I'm working on a 2012 Toyota Prius Hybrid. As I'm fumbling through this repair, I am going to go ahead and show you guys in reverse. So I'm going to go ahead and do the repair. Then I'll show you the steps that I took so I don't have to take up a lot of your time and I'll leave you guys some helpful tips along the way. In this video, I'm going to show you how to disassemble the Toyota fuse box. And you need to do this to get to these 100 amp fuses. So these bigger fuses are actually bolted in. They do not just pop out like some of these smaller fuses. So you need to be extra careful and in this video, I'm going to show you how to safely get this done. Whether you are working on a Prius, Corolla, RAV4, it doesn't matter. I will show you how to do this. So I blew one of these main fuses because I was adding an auxiliary port here for my Prius. So I could run this when the power goes out as a really efficient power generator. And I blew this. So I had to make an emergency fuse which is right there and I'll show you guys later on basically you can put something in the middle of those two contacts and you can still drive your vehicle in case this happens to you so if you're stuck don't worry just grab yourself a paper clip or some jumper leads attach this side and that side and then you can get the vehicle started and I'm almost done with this so I'm going to show you what I did as I'm reassembling it so that way I'm not taking guys on a long video ride here. And to make sure you don't cause further damage to your vehicle, you want to make sure you disconnect the negative battery terminal. So on this Prius, it's located underneath the passenger rear seat. And I have this disconnected. Make sure you're not working with live power. And this is held in place by two bolts. So there's a bolt on the back side, which was a 10 millimeter on some other vehicles like the Corolla or the RAV4, so eight millimeter. And there's another bolt right here. And there's a bolt right there. There's one on this side and one on the other side. And in order to get to this bolt, you're gonna have to pop the bottom tray, which I'll show you guys later on as I'm reassembling it. It's underneath here and it's very dark. It's a very dark corner. The car's black too, so it doesn't help. But the bottom cover has to slide down in order to get access to that. And you wanna make sure you do not drop that bolt. And the tools that I recommend for this are gonna be 10 millimeter socket, and you might need an eight millimeter. You cannot get this with a uh, an open-ended wrench as there's no room to turn it two large flat tip screwdrivers like that and a small tip screwdriver too this will help you undo some of the clips and for the socket you want to make sure you have something with a very shallow head as there's not a lot of room to work inside that fuse box And here's my two bolts and it does have washers attached and the nice thing is that the washers don't come apart as you don't have to worry about that and now I can simply remove this fuse up And for staying tuned until the end of the video, I'll give you guys some helpful tips because trust me, nothing is easy on this job. This has taken me over two hours to do. And when I first started, I thought it was going to take me about two or three minutes. And since nothing is easy on this job, you need to go and grab yourself some pullers like this. 
and ones that are adjustable so you don't actually break the fuse. You want to get on top of it and open it up, squeeze and pull back. Once the two nuts are removed, now I'm going to grab my replacement 100 amp fuse and I see why they made the design a little bit different as I think you can actually change this without having to pull it all the way out, which is awesome. Other than that, the fuses are identical and the holes match up right here. Now I'm going to pop these back in. I'm going to grab my bolt for the back side and put this back in and do not drop it. I have tightened the one on the back here, right there, hand tightened it so far. And you're able to move this around a little tiny bit now. And don't pull too hard as there's a wire and you don't want that out of alignment. I cannot get my fingers in there. So this attempt was a fail and now I'm going to go and add an extension to my 10 millimeter to see if I can get a better angle as this is pretty difficult guys. And I got myself a backup that's a little bit longer in case I need it. I don't have to run back. And trust me, guys, I've ran back a few times to get different tools. And this is very, very challenging. If you're enjoying me, get frustrated, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button as it will give me a little bit of uh, encouragement right now. Let me show you guys what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get that wire and that nut in that hole right there. And as a pro tip, you can put a little tape in your socket, just face it down like that. And pop the bolt in here and this way it will not slide out. And you might have a better chance of getting this done. Got it. I'm gonna go ahead and tie these up now. And then I'll show you how to slide that back in place and what you need to look for when you're trying to slide it down. And now the back side, and you wanna get this snug, but do not over tie this. Now I'm going to show you the clips that you need to disengage to get this to drop down. There's a clip right here. You can see that there is gonna be clip right here, one right here, and those are the three clips that hold this in place. Now that I have gone through and changed this out, I'm going to go and pop this back into place by pushing it up, and in order for this to work, I need to get this all the way underneath this track and come up. That's the only way that this will disengage is by making sure that it has cleared this track right here. And there's the other side of the track. So the way you get this to line up is by pulling on this tab towards you as hard as you can. Don't worry, it's pretty strong. And you have to line up the track right here inside this groove and at the same time, make sure that the back is not grabbing this corner right there. And you want to do this at an angle. So flip the box on the side as you're doing this. And this will give you the leverage you need and the angle you need to go ahead and pop this box up. Now I can just go ahead and just push up. And you heard it snap into place right there. It's locked in. Guys, I'm so happy about this. This has been really a challenge. I hate to say it, but this is pretty challenging and you're gonna get a few cuts on your hand. So don't get discouraged, just keep at it and you will get this done. 
and let me show you guys how to put the rest of this together and I'll give you guys those tips at the end so you don't cause further damage. The next thing that I need to do is actually reattach this box. If you can see that box moving around down there. And that is held together by these clips on the side. On the back right here and as you go around you'll notice there's one right here in the front and there's one in this corner over here and there's also a little resistance you're going to get from the wire loom right here towards the front and on your vehicle it might be a little bit different but do not remove all the wire loom just remove the part that needs to come undone so the back piece can fall down Now I have gone through and snapped the bottom piece in place. I put some electrical tape in the area that I unwound to get access to the bottom plate. And I'll put a zip tie on this later on. And I went ahead and put it in place. So there's gonna be a bolt right here that holds it in place. And there's gonna be a bolt that holds it in place right underneath this other bolt. I'm going to tighten that up using the wrench later. Now with that nut and bolt tightened up. So before I started, I want to take a picture of where the relays were. So in your vehicle, you may have to remove the relays for this to work. The relays are going to be those bigger fuse looking solid pieces and they may keep this from popping down so make sure that you remove any fuses and relays take a picture of it before you start and these just slide back into place i'm going to put the wiring harness back in place now and that just clips in like that and to undo it there's a little clip right here and that will allow you to pull that out and i'm going to put the wiring harnesses back now There's a wiring harness for this as well. And that just slides down and clicks into place. And to undo it, there's a little clip in the front right here. So undo the clip and this pops up and you will need these out of the way in order to drop this. Just so you have a little bit more freedom with the wires and do not pull on anything. There's a lot of electronics here and you could potentially damage this. And to give myself a little bit more room, I removed this 10 millimeter bolt here and I did a couple of clips. One was right here and this is for the coolant hose and it was attaching to the body plastic right there. And so I undid that. Now go ahead and get this lead back in place and there's a 10 millimeter bolt and you will not have this red thick wire that is what I'm adding to my Prius so I can run it as a backup generator when the power goes out and the whole reason I actually got myself into this mess so this fuse right here is the one that blows if you do try to jump start it in reverse as I was about to pick up my kit, I just thought about something. Make sure you do not jumpstart another vehicle using your hybrid vehicle unless you connect to the battery. Because a lot of times those jump ports go through that 100 amp fuse and you will blow it. And then you will think about me telling you not to do this and you're gonna hate yourself for it. So don't do it. That's not what I was doing. I accidentally touched one of these terminals against this part right here and this one out. So as a pro tip, make sure that this is your problem before you go and start on this repair. And it's very easy to do this by just removing this cover right here and then putting in some wire between the two contacts, just like it is here. And in my case, I needed to actually drive my vehicle. So I use a hot glue gun and made sure that wire is not gonna move. 
and it was almost a permanent solution I just wanted to go ahead and be extra sure as I don't want to go and overload the system as this only has a hundred amp DC to DC power supply and my inverter is 2000 watts so I am going to put a limiting factor of 50 amps on here if you guys want to learn more about that I'll leave you guys a link in the video description box down below but make sure this is your issue before you start as you may have a bad wire or bad contact and if that is the case you need to go and fix that at the same time you do not want to do this twice and when this does go out when you get inside your vehicle what will happen is the vehicle will not start especially in the case of the Prius it will not shift into neutral and basically all the lights on the dash are on and that is probably a result of you blowing this main 100 amp fuse and this fuse cost me about $13 I'll leave you guys a link to it in the video description box down below and you want to put this back in place there is a little cover that slides into place right here I removed it on mine and I'll leave you guys a video on how to jump start the Prius and in that video I'll show you how to remove that cover but again it's just two clips one here and one right here and you'll pull up on the cover and it'll slide out I reconnected the battery and let's start the vehicle you can see the vehicle starts and no issues so we are all done with the repair and everything's nice and snug and if you have a hybrid vehicle this will be associated with your DC to DC power and if you have a non-hybrid Toyota this will be associated a lot of times with your alternator or if you jump the vehicle backwards and a couple of tips that I wanted to leave you off with is take your time guys when you're doing this you want to find those clips and put the screwdriver in and just take your time and go all the way around and the same is true for the very bottom part so here's one clip I want to go and separate it after you've gone through and made sure there's no resistance go through the whole piece drop it down and remove all the fuses and then with the right clips pushed in it will allow you to go and back this up and if I helped you save a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars if you guys want to show some love I have a link down below on how you can go ahead and support the channel thank you so much